Oh, happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday, everyone. My name is Justin Moore. I'm the founder of Creator Wizard, where I teach you how to find and negotiate your dream sponsorships. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about whether non-traditional creators can get sponsorships. This is a question I get very frequently, you know, emails, DMs, uh, contact form submissions on my website, everyone wondering, like, I have this super niche platform or super niche channel or podcast or whatever. I don't think any brand would ever want to work with me. Um, and so it's like a very, very frequent, frequent um, message that I get. And so I wanted to address that today. So let me know where you're tuning in from today. Uh, I'm going live across YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, uh, you name it. I don't even know where else I'm, I'm going live. Um, and uh, we've got English Daily with Mimosa Andy said, definitely running a non-traditional channel over here. Looking forward to the content. Great to see you here. We've got John Leland tuning in from beautiful Northern California. That's where I am as well, John. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday. We've got Kaylee tuning in. Good to see you here. We've got uh, C and Victor tuning in on TikTok. Let me pull up my Instagram chat uh, to see who we got over there. Uh, let's see here. Am I live? I am live. There we go. We've got Marianne, Cre Marianne Cresp tuning in all the way from Sydney, Australia. Good to see you here. We got Gray Cedar home, uh, Cami happy tribe, uh, as well. Uh, good to see you here. So as you know, with these live streams, my time is your time uh, on these lives. Uh, I am here for you. And so we're going to get the juices flowing with a little bit uh, with a topic here uh, and then uh, dive into Q&A all around sponsorships, brand deals, negotiations, you name it, however I can serve you. Uh, we've got D and fam tuning in. What's up, D? Good to see you here. Uh, my partner in crime. Uh, we've got Ryan Clover Owens from Ithaca tuning in from LinkedIn. Good to see you here. We got uh, the Artist Haven tuning in from Southern Illinois. Uh, good to see you here uh, as well. All right. So let's get the juices flowing. So uh, on the topic of, of non-traditional creators and, and whether you can get sponsorships. Um, so I first want to kick off by uh, telling a story around how I started Creator Wizard um, and um, the, a decision that I that I made uh, about serving a very particular segment of, of folks. So when I first started out teaching people around sponsorships, I was very narrowly focused on YouTubers, TikTokers, Instagrammers, basically, um, because that was all, most of my experience, both with my wife and I personally, but also uh, when I ran my agency, as those were most of the deals that I did. And so when I launched my course and when I started making YouTube videos, that was like the persona, the audience persona that I had in mind. But was something that was very surprising to me was that over time, I started having all sorts of different types of creators reaching out to me uh, who were not social media creators, people who were podcasters, people who were bloggers, people who had you know newsletters, people who ran conferences and so on. And so I started to realize like, oh, like I actually can serve like very capably a lot more people than I initially expected. And so I made this pivot about a year, a year ago um, to start serving and start catering to some of these, um, you know, when I was making my, my newsletter blast or when I was, um, you know, making YouTube videos or even in my course uh, in terms of the examples that I was providing that um, I started just being a lot more inclusive of, you know, people who are, regardless of how you're building your business, if you have influence over a certain like, you know, uh, you know, certain audience, then I can help you. Right. And so I wanted to share that story because I think it is a parallel for a lot of people who have what they perceive to be super niche uh, channels, super niche audiences, like no brand would ever want to work with me. And I think that the reason that off, oftentimes we feel this is because we're evaluating ourselves and our content and our business in a vacuum. Um, and so the, the, the thing that I want you to hear is that just because you think that like no brand would ever want to partner with you doesn't mean it's true. Right. And so I think this is, this mindset shift is like, you have to start thinking about, start thinking about and researching your dream brands, objectives and initiatives and think, okay, how could I support them to make those things happen? There's this um, thing that I teach in my program called the rope method. And I've talked about it in some of my YouTube videos as well, um, where R stands for relevant, meaning that when you are approaching a brand or a company and saying, Hey, I want to collaborate with you. Um, then your pitch has to be relevant to them. Right. What the mistake that a lot of creators make when they're trying to forge partnerships and pitch brands is they just make it very them focused. They make it very, oh, I'm Justin. I have 50,000 followers and I get this many views and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And the brand like you're a dime a dozen basically to the brand. They don't care. There's lots of, you know, like there's lots of creators who have lots of followers and lots of views and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, what's in it for them? How can you help them move the needle in their own business? And so 
even if you are a, you know, quote unquote, non-traditional or niche creator, um, if you can capably illustrate to them that you can help them accomplish some business outcome, um, then they may just end up paying you, <laughs> right? And so I think that it's like a really, really important thing to, to understand is that you cannot just evaluate yourself in a vacuum. And, and even if there was a brand one day that did say something like that to you that, oh, I just don't think like you're a good fit, like you're too niche or something like that, that doesn't mean that's what every brand or every partner believes, right? The same could be true as like, I hear a lot of creators say like, oh, you know, I'm not going to reach out to brands because I don't have 10,000 followers or 10,000 subscribers or whatever, whatever it is. Um, because one time one brand told you like, oh, we only work with people who have this, you know, threshold of following or, or something, something arbitrary like that. Right. And so in your mind, oh, I guess that's what everyone thinks. Right. But in reality, that's not the case. And yes, of course, there are some brands who are very short sighted and who believe that. Um, but it really truly is uh, like a, a, an important acknowledgement that you have to understand and, and make to yourself that that's not what everyone believes. That's not what everyone thinks. Um, and so I, I wanted to like get that out the way because I think that, that there is kind of a mindset or like a, like a, a limiting belief to this whole point of like, Oh, I'm, I can't get, you know, sponsorships because I'm just too non-traditional, right? Um, we got Sarah Loretta in the chat. What is going on, um, everyone? Okay, Sarah Loretta just posted her uh, new product on Product Hunt. So if you are on Product Hunt, go over there, find out her, uh, you know, like go search for Sarah. It's called Workflows. I, I, if it's not called Workflows, please remind me. Sorry if I'm like botching this, uh, Sarah, but uh, she just launched on Product Hunt. And for those of you who, who understand Product Hunt or know, it's like really important to like support the people the day that they release so they can get like pushed to the top and get a bunch of eyeballs on them. So go support our girl, Sarah. She's our Notion uh, designer extraordinaire. She helps us with, with a ton of stuff. Uh, at Creator Wizard, so uh, go go support one of our own. Uh, we've got Parker's on the go tuning in from NC. Uh, good to see you here. We've got that almost vegan dude. Good to see you on TikTok. Uh, let's see who we got uh, here as well tuning in. We got Rob's Rob's other account. What's going on? Okay, big shout out to Rob. Rob just tuned in on Instagram. I just want to give a big shout out to Rob. Uh, as of this morning, I am so thrilled to share that Uscreen is going to be partnering with Creator Wizard uh, across the newsletter and the live stream and the community. I'm so excited to, to spread the word. This particular live stream is not sponsored by Ustream. It's going to start next uh, next Ustream next uh, next month. July is the first month. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to Rob. Rob is at uh, is uh, in uh, at VidCon right now, so I, w I wasn't able to uh, to join. But uh, but yeah, I'm so so thrilled and appreciative. Um, you know, partnerships like this with with Ustream really uh, enable us and the team to continue to bring awesome, amazing content to y'all. Uh, and so whenever we're able to forge these awesome partnerships, then it's like so so important that or so so critical um for for y'all to support them as well because it enables us to you know uh you know further the mission and you know i have this mission to help creators big and small land a million sponsorships by 2032 and so um to be able to do that that means investing in infrastructure growing the team um you know building out different tooling and and uh you know things like that that'll allow us to to make that happen and so we are very 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 excited to partner with rob and you screen uh, got a chance to hang out with them at craft and commerce a few weeks back in Idaho. Um, and their team is just, they're amazing people. And so really, really excited to, uh, to share more about them over the coming months. Um, so yes, yes. Excited to partner with you. Of course, we've got the blue hearts too, uh, because the, the, I think the use screen branding is blue. So good to see you, Robin. I appreciate you so much, man. Um, all right. So, uh, all right. So, um, second point I want to talk about here, um, around can non-traditional creators get uh, sponsorships. So, you know, one exercise that I think is a very, very important, uh, you know, thing to start considering for your own, you know, business as a creator is to introduce content formats that are helpful to your audience, but also make it easier for brands to envision hiring you. So for example, um, let's say that you run a, like you, maybe you teach foreign language or something, right? Uh, on your platforms, on your channel, your podcast, YouTube, whatever, whatever it is. Um, one thing that you can start doing is testing content where you, let's say, review different language learning apps or software programs. So basically you start setting the expectation with your audience or with your community that this is another way in which I am going to bring value to you and to serve you. 
right? And so what does that accomplish? Number one, it introduces pretty interesting new formats for you, right? Where instead of just like, you know, the same old content that you're used to making all the time, uh, you be like, hey, like, like this is something that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start buying, I'm gonna start reviewing different products and services and brands and things like that that are in this space, in this industry that's going to not only position you as an expert, um, but it's going to also start, people are, you know, in your audience are gonna start trusting your uh, judgment more because they start looking to you for purchasing decisions or, you know, when, when they're start evaluating different products and apps and tools and things like that, they're going to go and go to your channel or go to your page or platform or blog or newsletter or whatever. And be like, Oh, does, does, does Justin have any content like doing, you know, product comparisons or something like that in, you know, in, uh, uh, in, in his, you know, uh, back catalog basically. And so then when, a, when you are either pitching a brand or a brand is coming inbound to you saying, Hey, we'd love to collaborate with you. You now have a content cache where you can, you know, send something to them like, Oh yeah, you know, the, here's an, here's a creative idea of how I could like, you know, include your brand or your product in, you know, an upcoming, you know, uh, you know, review video or comparison video. Obviously you have to be very clear that maybe, you know, you probably do have editorial standards. You make it clear to the brand that like, Hey, I'm probably going to share a lot of great things, but there are maybe going to be one or two things that I'm going to share that may be cons, you know, to your brand or your product, but that's just, you have to be okay with that. And again, you have this conversation up front, so there's no surprises, but again, like positioning yourself as someone who reviews and tests and evaluates products and services is going to make it a lot easier for brands to realize like, Oh, okay. Yeah, people are actually following Justin for uh, those types of decisions. So, so we want to be in front of that audience, in front of that p prospective customer, right? And so, like, I, I think not enough creators th realize the utility that that can serve not only for their audience, but for, you know, forging partnerships down the line. Um, and so I think like this is a really, 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 really important thing, especially if you're a non-traditional creator, or if you're a niche creator, or you think like, I don't I don't know if there's brands that really would serve me in this, or I, I could serve in that way. And, and so starting to think about, oh, like con audience first, content first, how can I serve people? And then there will be downstream monetization impacts of that strategy as well. Is this making sense? Drop it in the chat. Come on, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a cha ching for myself. I'm gonna do an applause. Let me know if this is resonating because um, if you're if you're stuck in the doldrums and you're trying to figure out what new types of content to make, you really could knock out two birds with one stone um, experimenting with new formats like this, uh, as well as you know potentially satisfy um, brands who are are trying to you know figure out like whether or not you'd even be uh, like an eligible person to to move the needle for them, right? Um, we've got, uh, Berg Bell tuning in nail gun Nelly. What's going on? We got Janelle tuning in, uh, who recently joined my brand deal wizard program. Good to see you in here, Janelle. Um, and, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Rob, so hopping into a meeting here. Just wanted to, to drop by and uh, show you some love. Thanks, man. Good to see you here. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Uh, let's see here. Sarah, Sarah says, yes, since I built out my sponsorship strategy that the, the, that the partner has to complement the content that I'm already creating, I'm seeing a massive uptick in brands pitching me and an increase in affiliate too. Absolutely huge, Sarah. Congratulations. That is a huge win right there. Yeah, and, and, and I think that this is like a really important acknowledgement here. Like each and every one of you who are here on this live stream are you know, people who understand the value of building out a strategy when it comes to, to sponsors. Like what most creators believe is like a, a strategy is like they, a partner, like, you know, someone just comes inbound to their email inbox and is like, hey, we'd love to partner. They negotiate the deal, they create the content, and then they post it. Like, that, that is the extent of most people's strategies. But I'm sorry to say that that is not a strategy, right? That That's why you're here. You're learning about different ways in which you can position yourself, your creator brand, understand how your holistic persona is being displayed across all of social media, wherever you're, you know, your podcast, your newsletter, whatever, wherever you have your influence, uh, understanding that like, if you want to have a, a sustainable income, a continuous income, uh, a predictable income working with brands and working with partners, um, then like you have to sit down and actually put a strategy t in place that involves not just waiting for brands to come to you basically. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, I am, um, I'm, uh, you know, uh, I, I wanted specifically to talk about this topic because um, there's like this, this other uh, like item um, that I think is, is, is not talked about enough, which is that like when it comes to uh, whether you're a non-traditional creator or a niche creator, um, 
and you're having a hard time feeling as though it's like difficult to get sponsorships, um, I'll be straight with you. Like brands do not want more of the same. When there are thousands or tens of the you know thousands of creators that all look and sound the same, brands are increasingly willing to experiment with different types of creators. Um, and and so that's not to say that um, brands you know like it's still important to realize that you have to illustrate that you can reach their ideal customer. I think that's an important distinction here, right? So even though you may be niche, if you're able to draw the line saying, hey, yeah, I may have kind of a, you know, an oddball type of content or a niche type of content, but I'm st I am still have the ear of your ideal customer. And I think that this is not, this is not, this is something that a lot of creators don't realize and understand is that brands don't really care about working with like, like you. <laughs> At the end of the day, can you help them get in front of new customers or raise awareness of their ideal consumer. That's really what they care about at the end of the day. I was on a um, an office hours call, call earlier today for my Brand Deal Wizard students, or earlier this week, um, and uh, someone said, made this comment, something like, you know, we, we had, we've taken a couple other courses in this sphere, like around being a creator, being an influencer and all that stuff too. Um, and they said that this other course in particular that they took was like a preschool class when my program was like a college level course. And the reason that they said that there was such an important distinction was that these other programs are so focused on you, like as a creator, like how can you be the best creator possible? Which is like, it's important, but at the end of the, like, but what my, the difference between my program is that I, I lay it out very clearly that it's not about you. Brands don't care. This is a perspective that I've learned over the seven Seven years that I ran my influencer marketing agency that at the end of the day, they don't care to them. Like you're a lot of times you're just another creator. And so your goal is to help them understand that you're not just another creator. Why, why will, why does it make sense paying you three, four, five X the amount as someone with a commensurate following or commensurate viewership? Why are they going to do that? Why are they going to make that investment when to them, it looks like kind of apples to apples comparison. And so that is the whole exercise. That's the whole point of all of the stuff that I teach and all of the courses and coaching and all the stuff that I do is how can you differentiate yourself? How can you become not a commoditized, you know, like uh, not a commoditized, um, you know, uh, like person uh, when they are making this decision at the end of the day and they're, they say, okay, we have 50 K we want to work with 10 creators. Uh, you know, like what, like how we're going to allocate, how we're going to Tetris this budget together. Right. Um, and so like this big, this big unlock is that, even though like you think you're awesome and you think your content is awesome, that's important, but your entire goal when you're pitching and communicating with the brand is how can you help them reach new prospective customers? That's it. That's all you have to do. And yes, there are scenarios, there are you know situations where they may not care about that. The, the chief thing that they may care about is that they love your content. They think it, you, you know, you, they want to basically utilize your name and likeness to repurpose it, right? We've talked about this before is that, yeah, maybe they don't care about sales, or maybe they don't care about brand awareness or, or tapping into your audience in a repurposing campaign goal type. What they care about is taking, you know, getting some compelling content that they can embed on their website or repurpose on their social media or run paid advertising or, or whatever it is. Right. And so like, again, you have to understand it's not about you, even in the repurposing scenario, like it's still a serving a need for the brand partner, right? So that they don't have to go out there and hire a production company or another ad agency who has to go out there and hire, you know, actors and actresses to star in this content so that they can repurpose it. Right. Um, and so again, it's just like, I think that the biggest and most important, uh, like mindset shift around this whole non-traditional niche creator thing is that it's not about you. If you start thinking about how how can I serve the brand and start doing research and looking at their blog posts and looking at what they're posting on Instagram and social media and what they're posting on LinkedIn and looking at their job boards and understanding, like, let me do a little bit of sleuthing. Let me look at the breadcrumbs that they're leaving on, you know, on the internet, on the interwebs and see if I can, you know, infer what I believe their objectives are for this quarter or for this year. Um, so, so a really, really, really important, um, insight. I want to, um, uh, just share like a very quick win 
when I was at uh, Craft and Commerce doing a uh, like some workshops and, and presentations over there, um, I did a presentation around my rope pitching method that I briefly mentioned here, and I literally just got a uh, email like win uh, from someone who was in attendance at my workshop. I'm not going to share the amount uh, or who it is because they haven't allowed me to share this publicly, but I just wanted to share this because it's incredible. So this creator has a very, very niche uh, newsletter, a regional newsletter in like a, it's like a, in a town, <laughs> like it, it is like the largest town in a, in a, uh, in a state. Um, and, um, they had come up during my workshop and shared that they wanted to do a particular pitch, um, for, uh, for a particular brand. And I was helping them workshop about like what they could say and like the ways in which they could approach that. Um, they just emailed me today that they just got a multi five figure sponsorship using the rope method. <laughs> like this is not someone who's in my course, not a coaching student. They literally just took what they learned in the workshop and just nailed a multi five figure sponsorship. I hope to one day get permission to share who this creator is and what the partnership was. But I just wanted to share this when that this stuff works, y'all. This is a a hyper local newsletter in a in a in a town in a city and they were able to ink a multi five figure sponsorship using this methodology and so if this is not like evidence enough uh, i don't know what is like that would just that just absolutely blew my mind um so crazy um we got uh Canon Games turning in, excited to catch a stream and gain some more exposure to this side of online creating. Great to see you here. Uh, 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 Tanika said, um, hi, this is great, but how do we get their attention? Um, Sarah actually um, answered uh, and actually said, all the partnerships I've gotten have been from me tweeting about using the tool and then grabbing coffee with their team or they found me on YouTube and emailed me directly. Yeah, so um, a really great uh, and, and important insight that Sarah just shared uh, on, on in the chat was that um, she is actually going out of her way to get on these brands and these tools radars. She said, oh, you know, loving using blah, blah, blah right now. Like, it's so awesome how it's enabling me to do X, Y, Z. Smart brands and smart com companies are investing in tools called social listening tools. Th th these are like software tools where you can monitor. Basically, you have a dashboard of who is talking about your brand on the Internet, because there's two reasons that you do something like this. Number one, to monitor customer service issues. Right. So if people are like tweeting about how your software sucks or your service sucks or something like that, you want to be able to intervene and be able to solve those issues. Right. You see airlines doing this all the time. Like people are, whenever they have issues with their flights being delayed or canceled, they oftentimes turn to social media to complain about that. And then you'll see those airlines or other companies in, in the in the replies and the threads being like, oh, we're so sorry. Like, please DM us your confirmation number and we'll see what we can do, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Like the, most brands, like any brand or company worth their salt has tools like this, right? If they are any, you know, sizable company, right? And so the other like really important reason that you have social listening tools is for stuff like this. When you have really um, vocally positive uh, customers and or influencers, a lot of these tools are able to flag and escalate when people who have a sizable audience are tweeting you. So you can imagine if you have, you know, a quote unquote influencer or someone who is influential, not maybe not an influencer, but someone who is influential, maybe they have a hundred thousand Twitter followers or something. And they're, they're, you know, very well followed within their industry or within their niche. Oftentimes you can set those thresholds in this software to escalate that to like the department head or whatever, be like, Oh, we need to like, you know, mission critical we need to get back to this person within five minutes or something. Um, and so you can imagine that like if, if even if a tool is like, you know, relatively modestly large, like even someone who has 5000 followers or 10,000 followers in a niche um, could be someone that, you know, would be worthwhile reaching out. So when Sarah is tweeting about using a tool or using a software program or using a brand or something that may be a little bit of a smaller thing, that's probably going to get on their radar. And so it sounds like Sarah has been able to forge those relationships and start have you know having those conversations i think one really like important uh like thing to realize here um is that uh you know when you are a creator who is non-traditional or when you're a creator who are are a little bit more niche um like 
maybe pitching Nike or maybe pitching Coca-Cola or Walmart or some of these really, really giant brands is not the best move starting out. You know, you, like one of the things I teach is that you have to be realistic, right? And so maybe that means being, you know, setting your sights on brands and tools and services and, and you know, software or whatever that are a little bit, you know, smaller to medium size so that it's easier to get on their radar because everyone in their mother and brother and sister are like trying to pitch these gigantic conglomerates, these gigantic brands, right? But like, it actually might make more sense for you to get your practice, like start, like in fact, um, I just started cohort nine of my Brand Deal Wizard program and week one is all about pitching. And so I taught the live uh, live uh, session on, on Tuesday. And so like right now, the community is absolutely flooded with people um, you know, sharing their pitches that they're planning on sending out to brands and companies uh, right now because that is the homework for week one. Uh, and so it's like, it, it, like getting into this like mindset of um, like, uh, like building up your muscle memory, building up your skill of pitching is, is a thing, right? And so what, what you'll find is that a lot of the people who are in this, the, the private community right now who are sharing these pitches, um, they're not going after the, like, not all of them are going after these like gigantic brands, these gigantic companies. A lot of people are pitching the more moderate sized companies where the likelihood of hearing back from the director of marketing or the director of partnerships or director of influence or marketing manager, whatever. Um, we talk about titles and stuff like that in the program, but um, like the likelihood is going to be a lot higher. Right. And so I think it's like a really, really important, um, like insight there. Sarah says, LOL jokes on me on you, Justin, cause I only have two K in my audience. So there we go. Let's talk about Sarah. She is not only a notion expert, one of only how many, what 40 in the country, Sarah, but she's also an amazing designer. And so she's, you know, sharing a lot of these, uh, you know, tips and tricks with notion and design and things like that on her YouTube channel. And a lot of these very niche tools are finding her even with two th only quote unquote, 2000 people in her audience. So I want this like forever. Like, let's just draw a line in the sand right here that like Sarah is, is starting and having and forging these partnerships, even with only quote unquote, 2000 people in her audience. So I don't want to hear anyone here say that, oh, I'm too niche or too non-traditional. Like, uh, you know, my content's too non-traditional to be able to get Partnerships. Every brand deal is $3,500 now, says Sarah, with only 2,000 people in her audience. She's charging $3,500. So, okay, like, can we put this to bed now that it's a complete, like, falsehood that non traditional creators can't get sponsorships? Right? This is one thing that I'm, that I'm really realizing. And again, I talked at the top about how. When I started, I was like saying, oh, I, I think only YouTubers or Instagrammers or TikToks, only those type of creators can get sponsorships because that was like my my experience at, right? But like, I just started having all these people under the sun come to me and being like, hey, I'm actually making a lot of money on sponsorships, but I'm not a social media creator. Like, can you still help me? <laughs> right. And so it's like there, there's a like I think this big myth that like a non, you know, Twitter influencer or a newsletter operator or someone who has a course or a community or whatever. Like, look, I I got my course sponsored, y'all. I had all of these creator economy cut. Like, OK, when I started Creator Wizard, I did not think honestly, candidly that like sponsorships was going to be a big like revenue driver for my business. That, that was not something I really anticipated. I was really thinking I'm going to like teach people. I'm going to educate people around this process. Right. But the, like the more I grew and the larger my audience of creators got, there was all these creator economy companies banging on my door being like, Hey, we are trying to access creators. That's our like ideal audience. All these software tools and, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you screen, right? Like who is now a sponsor of creator wizard, right? Like their audience, ideal audience is ideal consumer is creators, right? And so sponsorships is now a five figure revenue stream for me a month. Whereas I never anticipated that it was going to even play a role in my business. Right. Um, and so like, it, it's a, it's a really important like insight here is that even though you think and you may not have a bunch of inbound deal flow where people are banging on your door to want to partner with you, um, like that does not mean that sponsorships couldn't play a meaningful role in your business. Um, Key TV uh, asked, like, what is considered a non-traditional creator? Honestly, it's like, like 
you tell me. Like I have people reaching out to me all the time saying like, I have a underwater basket weaving channel or I have a podcast all around this like super, super niche topic. Generally, I think of like non-traditional as like super niche, right? Like like where it's like not super obvious what brands or companies would ever wanna like partner with a creator. And so like, I don't I don't know. Like I I, I think you know how I feel about this, right? Which is that it's, it's, it's hogwash, right? Like everyone can get sponsored if you're able to find the right brand and partners that you can serve and that you can provide value to and help them accomplish their business objectives, right? So it's like, I, I don't know. I don't know what non-traditional creator means. It's like, cause everyone has a different definition of this, but my, the myth that I'm trying, trying to dispel is that, that there is no such thing as like a non-traditional creator. Okay. Yeah. Like on the, on the face of it, like I'll be totally like real with you. Like, yes, I get it. A lifestyle influencer or someone who shares like fashion or, you know, food or something like that on social media. Like that's what a lot of people consider a traditional influencer or, or traditional creator, because it's, it's, it's a little bit more obvious the types of brands and companies that would want to sponsor a food influencer or something. But by the same token, like if you are just a generic food influencer or whatever, that's a dime a dozen. There's thousands, tens of thousands of those type of people on the internet. Right. Um, and so like the non-traditional conversation that we're having here is like when you are not that, when you are not the like big overarching like umbrella content vertical that is obvious of like, oh, I could pitch any brand basically because like they'll all want to work with me, right? When you're not that. And so that's really what we're talking about. Um, Key TV says, I just got partnered on YouTube. How could I go about finding sponsorship opportunities instead of waiting for companies to find to me? Find me. That's a great question. So uh, let me know. Can you drop in the chat what your content vertical is? We can do a little bit of brainstorming right now. Uh, it's it's a little difficult for me to to give you some suggestions and, and until I know really what your what your focus is. Um, that'll that'll be um, that'll be helpful. Let me take a swig. Okay. Key TV says, um, I uh, teach creative uh, freelancers and small teams how to operate better online. So sharing content about what tools can uh, achieve that is what I do. I would say, I would say I'm a non-traditional. Um, yeah. So great. It's a, like a really great um, like insight there from Sarah. Um, okay. So key TV says I'm a gaming channel. I'm focused on NBA 2k. So like a, uh, a, you know, like a video game, a specific video game, right? I'm a gaming channel. Okay. So one exercise that I think would be really helpful for you and anyone on here listening who is thinking, I don't know, like who I could even reach out to as a, as a creator is this exercise that I call, um, understanding, trying to understand your audience's psychographics, not just their demographics. So I would venture to guess that if you looked in your YouTube analytics and you looked at your demographics tab, you probably heavily skewed towards male, um, probably 18 to 34, maybe even, you know, on like 13 to 18 is, is a 13 to 17 is like a big bucket for you. Um, but I, I would guess that you're on the younger demographic side, but beyond the demographics, like, let's try to double click on that and try to understand like a little bit more about them. Like, are these people, uh, still in high school or college? Um, are they, you know, about to graduate and trying to get their first job? You can ask them these things with polls in your YouTube community tab, for example. You can say, hey, I would love to learn a little bit more about y'all. Like, and you put a question there, a poll, like, hey, how many of you are working full time? How many of you are still in school, right? You, you can do this like maybe once a week or once you know, every couple of days or something and you start piecing together this information about your audience. What could you do with this information? Well, if you know that people are uh, you know, still in you know, college or something like that, Perhaps trying to forge a partnership with a tool that helps you uh, study better, a productivity tool, a tool to help you, you know, like online studying, you know, accountability, you know, software, uh, something like that. Maybe that would be helpful if you find out that a big segment of your audience, yeah, they love like, you know, watching and playing NBA 2K, but they're also students and they're also trying to do well in school or they're also trying to get their first job and you can figure out how to pitch and partner with a, you know, online productivity tool, 
or something like Notion or, or something like that, that a lot of students use. You come to them and you pitch them and say, hey, I, I'm a gaming creator, but I did this survey of my audience and, and a, a, you know, 70% of them, 60% of them are students who are like interested in productivity and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you might think, how could I integrate, like, you know, how could I figure out what brands to partner with? Well, boom, there you go. I bet you could think of a pretty creative you know, like integration on your gaming channel of how Notion can help you be productive even like when you're gaming. Maybe it's like, you know, you use Notion to like, you know, start organizing all the different strategies and tools and tricks and, you know, combos or whatever when you're playing the game too. So like, there's a lot that like, that would not be an obvious like brand or partner that you would think to like reach out to and pitch until you did that psychographic research of your audience. So I think this is like a really, really important uh, like concept here uh, to to understand like an exercise that you should go go through to understand more about your audience. Andre Fang Fire on TikTok says non traditional. I write a newsletter with five k subs focused on financial independence for Fang Tech. So look at that. I think I, I think Andre, I see like the Meta like logo in your bat in your profile photo. And so like look at someone like that. You could call Andre like hyper niche, right? He's helping people who work at Fang companies, which is what? Facebook, Apple, uh, Adobe, Netflix, Google. I don't, maybe it's not Adobe. Who's the, the, the second A? I, I think I met, oh, Alphabet. I think it's Alphabet. Anyways, um, like, like helping people within that, those like, you know, uh, tech companies achieve financial independence, right? Financial independence, you know, uh, retirement early, right? So like you could consider that niche, but I bet you there is a lot of tools, a lot of software programs, a lot of like financial advisory firms that would want to get in front of Andre's audience. Amp Apple and Amazon, my bad, right? So I bet you anything that there's a lot of, there's a bunch of people who would be salivating to get in front of Andre's audience. And so all it takes is doing that psychographic research. I'm, I'm assuming you've done this, Andre, or if you if not, you should. It's sending out a survey or a type form or a Google form or whatever it is and, and understand if you're comfortable asking about, you know, HHI, household income, this type of thing, and being able to provide that type of information to a pr prospective sponsor and being like, hey, even though I only have only have 5,000 subscribers on my newsletter, like I like these are all like high net worth individuals and these are all people who can invest, you know, 10, 20, $30,000 in financial advisory or, or something like that or a tool tool to help them like manage their finances or something like that. Right. And so it's not necessarily about about audience size. It's about the impact of the of the it's about the profile and the psychographics of the audience members themselves. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Glad glad that's helpful. Um uh, Cannon says, dang, as a fellow gaming channel, I focus on Pokemon challenge content. This has already been huge. The sponsorships don't have to be a, a, in relation directly to the content, but about the audience's life. Yes, exactly. Like what is going on in their life? What's keeping them up at night, right? What are the problems that they're having? You have to understand and have it be audience first, because then it's not about shoving a sponsorship onto the audience. It's about how you're helping them accomplish something in their life. Right. So, so super, super, super important insight. Um, tech audit TV says you can also work in tech. You used to play NBA 2K into your, into your, um, oh, you can also work in tech. You use to play NBA 2K into your content, like controllers, monitors, right. And use affiliate links to generate sales and then use that data to show that your content drives money. Boom. Brandon from tech audit TV, dropping the hot flames over here about different strategies that you can do. Right. Crafting like crafting with crazy says this is my new favorite thing to do. Yes, Jen, it's amazing. It's amazing, right? Russell Muscle TV says I just landed my first brand deal with the help of your videos. Come on, we got to get some applause, some cha-chings in the chat here. Come on, Russell. Everyone, everyone. I want to see a bunch of hand clap emojis in the chat for Russell here because if there's if there's one thing that we sell, we celebrate a lot of stuff on this channel. But this is the one of the main things that we celebrate here. This is an absolutely transformative moment, and we are all gonna we're gonna give some love to Russell here in the chat. <laughs> I am just so thrilled for you, Russell. That is incredible. Yes. Sarah says, yes, let's go, Russell. We got chills in the in the uh, TikTok chat. Myra saying, congratulations, Russell. Freaking W says, says, uh, says uh, Canon. Yes, there we go. Boom, says John. 
Yes, I love to hear it. Yes, Russell, you got to give us some details. Like what? Tell us tell us more about it. I want to acknowledge you because you've been putting in the work. I'm really, really proud of you. We've got Ian in the TikTok chat uh, tuning in. Yes, I'm, I'm so thrilled for you, man. I've talked I've, I've said this before, but like there's two highs that I chase in this in my life when I like, like get me out of bed every morning and just get me so fulfilled to show up here every week, every day that I'm here for y'all trying to trying to help you unlock this. Uh, like a revenue stream in your business, the first unlock or the first like high that I chase is when people get their very first brand deal like you just did, Russell. Because to me, it's it's not just the money or it's not just the deal that it represents. It's this mindset shift that like, wow, this could actually be something. Up to now, it was just a hobby. Or up to now, I was only like making money from like, let's say YouTube, you know, AdSense or something like that. But wow, there's actually brands out there that will compensate me to talk about them. That is absolutely massive. So that's like a, like, I like that, that, that you, this could be something. This could be a career. I could do this full time. It's like, like now the future is like pregnant with possibility that. And so like, that is so like, I remember the first paid deal that we got and it was just like amazing, amazing. Like this is, this could be a thing. Right. And so like enabling people to get that, uh, is so, so fulfilling. And then the second one is like when, when people realize like, Oh, I can actually charge not a thousand dollars for this, but $10,000 for this without 10 times the amount of work that like could take the business to an absolutely new level or, you know, a stratosphere that you never anticipated. And so those are the two like highs that I really chase and just like, oh my God, they drive me and they fulfill me to no end. Um, and so like hearing that, that anecdote from you, Russell is really, really, really honestly is amazing. Um, so super, super proud of you. Um, all right, I'm going to take a swig. My, I must say my voice, I'm, I'm, I, I, you may be able to like hear that I'm like starting to lose my voice, uh, because I've been talking a lot this week. I've been doing my courses, office hours. Uh, I have been on some like multiple podcasts this week. And so my voice is, uh, is starting to go, <clears throat> pardon me. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely massive. Russell says, I applied to the Fiverr program that you highlighted in your newsletter and at first I actually got declined. But I had such a but I had such a good idea to integrate it with my content. I replied with the idea and I got accepted. Let's talk about the perseverance right there that Russell just illustrated. He applied to the Fiverr Influencer Program, which is something I highlighted in the newsletter, got rejected and said, you know what? No, this idea is too good. I'm going to reply back with this idea because I really do think this is going to kill it and got accepted. Like that is, hold on a second here. That is absolutely inspirational and incredible. He, in the face of a rejection, still showed up, still persevered, still pitched it because he really believed in the idea and overcame their initial objections, overcame their initial hesitations and got the deal. That is unbelievable, Russell. I am so proud of you and I am going to screenshot the heck out of this right now because that is amazing. You you are, and for your first brand deal, no less. Holy cow, that is like super inspirational. Sarah says that is a gangster move right there. I love it. I totally agree. That is incredible. My goodness. I love to hear it. Well, Russell, when you ultimately go live with that Fiverr video, will you send me send me the link, email it to me, reply to one of my emails, send me the link because I really want to see when that thing goes live because that is just amazing. Canon says pushing through the face of adversity. Heck yeah. And you know what? Like um, the other thing I'll, I'll mention here is like super, super valuable to me, Russell, is that, you know, like I've taught, I've, I teach this and I talk about it, but like when you share anecdotes like this of, of being able to uh, like get sponsorships of things that I've, I've highlighted in the newsletter and things like that, um, that actually really helps me and my business because now I'm able to go back to Fiverr and say, Hey, you partnered with me, you sponsored me to like tell creators about this program and look, look at the results that it's driving. Look at, you were able to like change the life of Russell here. So like Russell, I am equally grateful for you sharing that to me uh, because now I'm going to be able to go back and, and share that to Fiverr and say uh, like, uh, thank you. Like here's the results that I've been able to generate because you, you believed in me and, and you know, 
we're partnered with with Creator Wizard. And so, like, if any of you out there are, are you know, uh, listening to this or watching this and have gotten a sponsorship because of something I shared in the newsletter or because of, you know, opportunities that I've shared in the newsletter, please let me know. Please reply to me. P please tell me about those things because it really helps my business too. It really helps, like, keep the lights on here. It helps me be able to develop case studies and post campaign reports and things like that uh, so that I can illustrate to my partners and my sponsors that, like, it, it's a good investment to, like, continue to work with Creator Wizard. So, if, if I, if, if there's anything that I've ever done, that's like helped you and your business, please let me know that like that feedback is so, so important to me and so impactful. So, so thank you very, very much. Um, yeah. Uh, crafting with crazy says, yes, love that. Totally agree. Totally agree. Oh, okay. Russell says going uh, live within two weeks. We'll definitely send your way. Yes. Love to see it. Um, yeah. D and fam says that is so, so impressive. hundred percent agree. All right, guys. So while I take a swig, please drop it in the chat. Uh, what your uh, questions are around sponsorships and negotiations and brand deals. We've got Cody J turning, tuning in on TikTok. What's up, Cody? Cody says we stand Justin Moore with a hand, with a little like hand clap right here. I appreciate you, Cody. Uh, really, really means a lot to me. And congrats to you, Cody. I saw Cody uh, got like uh, this like. There's like this mosaic of creators at uh, VidCon because VidCon is happening right now in Anaheim and Cody is featured in the mosaic that YouTube put together. Like, holy cow, let's get some, some hand claps right there in the chat. Cody is making moves over here. Congratulations, Cody, that's incredible. All right, so drop your questions in the chat while I take a swig. All right, let's see here. Um, I There was a question um, that, uh, let's see here. I had another question that I think I missed uh, earlier on. Let me see here. Um, oh, okay, here we go. Um, Andre, uh, oh yeah, here we go. Andre said, how do you flip affiliate partnerships into sponsorships? So uh, great question, Andre. So because I know your particular niche, um, then uh, this this will be a, a good thought exercise for you or a real kind of teaching example. So I'm assuming maybe there are tools out there that are more than willing to, you know, give you, you know, have you be in their affiliate program. Let's say something like Robinhood, right? Or Coinbase or something like that, where, you know, people like you get credits every time people, you know, you talk about, you know, how you, you know, potentially should diversify your portfolio with, uh, you know, a certain percentage of crypto holdings, or you should use Robinhood instead of other tools or whatever. And so you talk about those in a newsletter or in a blog post or something, and you link the, you know, the affiliate link of, of that tool. Um, right. So it's like good, uh, you know, easy plugs when you're already talking about that topic. Um, but it's like, okay, there's probably money to be had here. If I would be able to convince something like Robin hood to actually like compensate me to give them more of a, of a, you know, prominent feature in the newsletter. Right. And so, uh, the biggest, like, like, thing to understand around the difference between affiliates and sponsorships is like, let's look at it from the, from the businesses or the company's perspective, right? Affiliates, like having affiliates, having an army of affiliates out there talking about them is the best case scenario for brands, right? Because they do not have to outlaw outlay any sort of like capital, any sort of investment. Uh, and the only thing they have to do is compensate you when you drive some sort of conversion, which is the ideal scenario. So if someone sign up, signs up, they become a paying member of Robin hood. That's when they're going to compensate you. They're, they don't have to invest anything for you to just be out there talking about them, which is basically free brand awareness out them for, out there for them. Right. And so that's their mindset, right? And so when you come to them and pitch like, hey, I've made, you know, $20,000 for you. I have an affiliate dashboard. I've made $20,000 or I've made, I've signed up a hundred customers over the last six months for you. You should sponsor me. They'll be like, nah, we're good. Like we're fine with this current setup. That's their mindset, right? And so like, it's your job, Andre, to illustrate to them that like, hey, here's the ways in which I can serve you beyond just the direct conversion thing. Right. So, for example, let's say that one uh, avenue that you could pitch them, because I know you're a writer, Andre, is that you go and you look at the Robin Hood blog 
and and you say you say, hey, you know what? It seems like you're only posting on the Robinhood blog once every two months, or once a month, or whatever, or something like that, or or you know, you're not you you do not have a LinkedIn newsletter for Robinhood uh, or or something like that, right? I could actually I'm actually talking about this content all the time. I could be that person who generates. Not only will I distribute this content in my newsletter to 5,000 Fang employees who are interested in fire, but I can actually syndicate this content for you across onto your owned and operated platforms, on your blog, on your website, on, on LinkedIn for you. I could like turn these into tweet threads and you can tweet that from the Robinhood handle or, you know, someone else, you know, on the marketing team or the communications team from Robinhood could do that. Um, and I will be kind of a ghostwriter for you. That is a sponsorship. In addition to distributing that content on your own platforms, but you're also doing these things in other ways. You know what else you could do, Andre, is strategy work. You could say, hey, I have got 5,000 of your ideal, like honestly, your ideal customers in my audience. I understand them intimately because I've done the psychographic research that we just talked about, right? I have uh, like, I've done customer interviews where you've actually like, this is something you should do if you haven't done this, Andre, where you just send a, a you know, a Calendly link out and you say, hey, I've got, I'm like looking to like talk to some of you. I've got five spaces. Like, would you be willing to like hop on a Zoom call and just talk to me about, you know, how you interact with my content, challenges that you're having in your life, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And so then you can say to this brand, I've done the, these interviews and, and I actually have some data. I've actually in these interviews, talked to them about Robin Hood. Don't you think they're going to want that market research? They're going to want that you know, feedback from you. And they're going to say, Hey, I would love to be a quarterly strategic consultant for you of what I am seeing day to day, like on the ground of people who are responding to my newsletter. They're responding to my emails. This is the thing that's keeping them up at night. I can, I can do that for you. In addition to being an affiliate, in addition to doing these other things, I can do a webinar in partnership with you. Brands and companies are absolutely desperate to talk about anything other than their product because that's what they're doing day in and day out. And so if you come to them and be like, hey, here's all these other esoteric ways in which you can provide value to your customers. Imagine that. What if you come to Robinhood and you say, hey, Robinhood, uh, like what if we do a quarterly webinar together? They can then send that out to their customer base who then you get in front of, your newsletter gets in front of the, all their customer base and say, hey, we're doing this partnership with you know Andre's Fang Fire newsletter. Um, come to this webinar where we're gonna be talking about X, Y, Z. Isn't that mutually beneficial? So there's all these ways in which you can provide value to brand partners that don't look like a traditional sponsorship but could represent a very, very lucrative revenue stream for you. Is this helpful, Andre? I hope this is helpful. Let me take a swig. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, Sarah says, I did a partnership with Paperform. That was awesome. I did one video for my channel and one for theirs. Should I build a few sponsor tiers? Part two, should I build a few sponsor tiers and always make that option um, or pick and choose who I offer that to? It was successful because I got to do my normal stuff, but then directly teach a works workshop style video for their audience. Um, so like my, my perspective here around designing bespoke like proposals and pitches when you're interacting with sponsors is that it always has to align with their objectives. Sometimes brands and partners don't don't have a lot of experience like collaborating with with folks, with creators, with you know people who have online businesses and stuff. And so it can be helpful to uh, right out the gates, provide them some you know ideas for them to to get the juices flowing. But generally, I am much more of a fan of just having a conversation first before you put something in front of them. You get on a phone call and just be a detective. Ask them questions about all the different objectives that they have, and you know what what types of new features are they coming out with? Like what are their you know quarterly goals? Like what's their plans for twenty twenty four, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get this kind of info dump of all the things that they're trying to accomplish. And then in response to that, you come back to them. In fact, you know, I have these proposal templates that Sarah actually helped me de design that, um, you know, as part of my brand deal wizard program and page number one or page number after the cover page, page number one is what we heard or what I heard, which is a direct regurgitation of what you heard on the call that you had with the brand and said, Hey, you know, 
you said that your goal is X, Y, Z. You said your goal is ABC. You said your goal is uh, CDE. I, I was trying to figure, figure out a new uh, <laughs> three letter pair, right? But it's like, this is what you told me. And then the next page is, here is how I'm gonna help you accomplish that with these different packages. So it's a direct correlation to their goals. So it's not just like, oh, hey, sponsor me, pay me this much money to sponsor me. It's no, sponsoring me is going to enable you to accomplish your objectives. It's a, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a positioning exercise. So they're still sponsoring you, but sponsoring you is going to enable them to accomplish their objectives. Right. Um, and so to answer your question, Sarah, like, I think at the end of the day, uh, like the most important thing is yes, you provide packages or maybe you don't, if, if you just need to provide them, uh, like, like if they tell you that like, Hey, if you do this for us, it's going to help us. It's going to make us super happy. Then that's all you need to pitch them. Right. But generally I am a big fan of like presenting them with multiple, multiple different options and packages for them to stretch, to stretch their mind of what the, of all the different ways in which you can serve them. So yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a really great way to approach it. Andre says, I love it. That absolutely aligns with my expertise too. Then yeah, hundred percent. I, I totally think that you, that's an approach you should take totally. Um, let's see here. We got a question from, um, St uh, Stephanie Faraz. There are some companies that will tell me that they don't work with creators with less than 20,000 followers, but some of their creators that have that, uh, that have way less engagement or they buy likes and views. I know way too many creators that do this. And it's so frustrating because while I have some, uh, organic engagement, they have bots. That's super, super frustrating. And in fact, it's something that my wife and I talk about a lot, uh, and joke, joke about, I feel like my wife is like the, an Uber detective. She can always tell me, she'd be like, Oh, this person buys followers or this person buys views or likes or whatever. And we always, we always have this kind of like side joke around like this, this whole thing that people, uh, cause it's not hard to like buy 10,000 followers or whatever. And the brands who are not savvy and don't understand this, uh, it's really unfortunate because they, um, at, at the end of the day, like they, uh, like they are, they just have not done enough due diligence to understand what makes a good and, and like authentic partner. Right. And so, Number one, Stephanie, the advice I can give, if you do believe that you want to go down this road, you absolutely can feel free to educate them. You don't need to throw anyone under the bus being like, did you know these other five people that you're working with have bought followers or whatever? Um, you don't need to necessarily like say that, but you can call stuff out like that. If you want it, like in a, in a way, perhaps uh, finding an article on Adweek or Digiday or something like that, where it talks about, you know, the importance of uh, understanding how engaged uh, a, a follower's audience is. So it's almost like you're subtweeting those other people that, you know, that, that they're partnering with, but you're doing it in a, in a tactful way where you're providing data, you're providing articles or research or, or something uh, showing that like, this is a rampant thing. Uh, and that, and that, that, you know, actually partnering with people who may have a smaller following, but a more engaged audience may be a better investment for certain brands. And so maybe that's the way in which you combat people who are brands who are saying this is you send them articles like that. So rather than just being like, how dare you? That's stupid. You know, this type of thing, you're providing value to them. And so it may cause them to, uh, you know, take a second look at their strategy and these arbitrary follower thresholds that they're instituting across their influencer program. And so again, that's going to be more work. Right. But this, there's this thing that I say is that it is your job as a creator to educate brands. A lot of people want to play, you know, be victims and just kind of like be all huffy puffy about this stuff. But I'm going to give you tough love. I believe that it is your job as a creator to educate brands. And yes, it's going to require more legwork. It may require you to hop on calls with brands and go through the whole dog and pony show. And it may not, uh, you know, result in a partnership, but that is the game. That is the game. You have to understand that this is a long-term game. And so if you take back ownership over this whole thing and realize that you're not just a creator, you are a consultant, that you're going to start realizing that, wow, I actually have a lot more expertise than I was giving myself credit for. So I hope that's helpful, Stephanie, because that's that's really like how I believe, you know, yeah. Oh, and Jen says so frustrating. Yeah, I, I hear you. And I, I see this happening. Right. Um, and so I think that that's like a, an important mindset shift here is that rather than getting frustrated, realize that there's nothing that you can do about these other people out there who are, you know, doing fraudulent activity, buying followers, buying, you know, views, all this stuff. There's nothing that you can do. The only thing that you have control over is you. And so what are you going to do with that power? Simple question. What are you going to do with that power? Mm. 
All right. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, uh, we got digs, by the way. What's going on? Good to see you here. Sarah says, hey, heck yeah, I did. Those proposal decks are freaking beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks to you, Sarah. I appreciate you very, very much. Um, number one t-shirt instructor on TikTok. What is going on? Uh, good to see you here. Uh, Mel, uh, furniture makeovers in DIY in here in the TikTok chat. Good to see you here as well. Um, we've got, uh, oh, we got Jacob, financial rocket science tuning in, Corey in the kitchen. Uh, talk to me. Um, uh, Mimi Nice, I think that's right. Um, Rose Mantix, uh, Makeup by Dion, Farah Munir, uh, Nicholas Ellersick. Good to see you all here on IG uh, as well. Uh, man, my voice, I like, my voice is about to go out. I don't know if you guys can tell. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, can't believe it. We're already at time, guys. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for, for showing up today. It really means the world to me, honestly. I love hanging out with you guys. Some of you come every single week. Uh, and I've seen the growth. I've seen the success and how learning some of these things, you've been able to take this into your creator business and use these things when you're negotiating and communicating with brands. Uh, and I'm just so proud of each and every one of you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, and uh, <clears throat> pardon me, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you all on the flip side.